Modern science will tell you that it is impossible for the Earth to be hollow. This same modern science will tell you that man came from a monkey and there are no such things as UFOs. The official position of the Church, the Holy Roman Inversion, was that the Earth was flat. The emerging scientists began to realize that this was wrong and eventually proved it to the world. The Church was wrong and therefore the Bible must have been wrong. Today, in the minds of too many people, the Bible has lost its validity because men were wrong. It is interesting to note that the Bible declared the earth was round long before there was a modern science or the church. In the Old Testament we find this passage. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. The Bible has always remained true. It is man's own interpretation or rather the lack of proper interpretive procedures that are flawed. We may also have the similar problem with the idea of a hollow earth. Most evangelical Christians pro profess belief in a literal hell. When pressed to define where it is, most will point to the ground or define this never-never land in another dimension on some spiritual plane idea. This uncertainty may come from the conflict or apparent conflict of a biblical description compared to the modern so-called scientific position. Sir Edmund Haley, astronomer, mathematician, and yes, the comet guy, in 1692 published his theory about a hollow earth. His theory was developed from working with Sir Isaac Newton on earth magnetism fluctuations and the possible causes. His solution, the earth was hollow. He believed that there were three concentric cones with a molten lava core which served as an inner sun. Originally, the early American government took the idea of a hollow earth seriously. The Smithsonian Institute was built expressly for the purpose of containing the findings from a hollow earth from the failed expedition of 1838 and 1840 led by Charles Wilkes to the Antarctic. The exp expedition was based on the work of a retired American military officer turned hollow earth researcher John Sims and had the approval of the President John Quincy Adams and the United States Congress. Many other attempts followed by other countries and other U.S. explorations produced the same failed results leading right up into modern times today. The 1938 Nazi expedition will prove to be the most important to the conclusion of our story and will be discussed further in the last part of this series. Beginning in the early 20th century, after many failed attempts to discover an opening to a hollow earth by U.S. and many other countries, modern science began to conclude that the whole idea was impossible and the social attitude changed from one of acceptance to laughable foolishness. Because of this, the church has taught a vague, unclear concept of hell, trying to bridge this gap of assumed science and the biblical descriptions by separating spirit and flesh and the physical from the ethereal. It also has blinded us to an important element to the story of end-time events, as we shall see later. The actual evidence, scientifically, is no more conclusive about a hollow earth than it is about evolution or UFOs. They all include an element of faith, not conclusive scientific facts, to believe in. The actual fact is that we, at least the public, know very little about inner earth conditions. The conditions. In spite of the demands made by modern science, we have never probed beyond the crust and any ideas spoken from anyone are only unproven theories and hypotheses. Science by its own standards has failed to prove the earth is solid or hollow. One modern day geophysicist claims that there is valid scientific proof that hollow planets and moons may be the norm and not even the exception. It is interesting to note in America that there are two laws about the underground that seem suspicious. Did you know that you have to have a special permit to explore caves even on private property anywhere in the United States? Cave locations are exempt from the Freedom of Information Act and you cannot get access to this information from our government. <clears throat> there are many different ideas of what a hollow earth could be like. We will look at some of the most popular theories. One is Halley's which describes a series of concentric cones layered within themselves, as I have already stated, and the other states that there is a series of long tubular caves and caverns as large inner voids that give the appearance of a hollow earth. The last one claims that an inner outer landmass with a huge hollow void and a central core serving as an inner sun with holes at the poles are the reality. The bottom line is that we do not know for sure what just lies beneath the outer crust of the earth. Legends and myths are universal about a hollow earth as the creation and the flood stories of the Bible, as mentioned in part one. 
that may be where we have to get go to get a description of what lies below the surface of the earth with any kind of assured accuracy. This would only be relative to if you believe the Bible is the word of God and that many things can be taken in a literal sense.